G'day and welcome to Wine Passion TV. We're looking at uh, something a little bit different today. Um, we're doing a white, we're doing a Pinot Gris. We're doing a Pinot Gris from New Zealand, specifically a Pinot Gris from Hawke's Bay. Now, this falls under the Seraphim brand, which is my little baby. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit um, of the background of why I've got something from New Zealand. Now, my motto for my brand is Seraphim Wines from the Golden Valley and beyond. Golden Valley is my home, my home wine, my, uh, home region, I suppose. Beyond meaning anywhere else. What I'd like to do, my goal is to teach people and expose people to different wines from different areas of the world. Um, and by being able to source wines from different parts of the world, I can then show people the differences that one variety can make, made in two different countries, two different um, climates, two different soil types, two different wine making techniques, etc., etc. So, Sarah from Wines, Golden Valley, and beyond is um, basically what I'm trying to do is showcase wines under under this brand. Now, I have had a hand, not in making it, but in selecting it, tasting it, and ensuring that it's the right product for, for my brand and to be able to showcase it to um, to people out there. So, this is something that I'm very, very proud of. And um, in the, the red side of things, I've got a very, very exciting little project going on with something uh, Australians love. Australians, uh, well, it's what we're known for but again, from a different country, different wine making techniques, etc., etc. So keep your eyes peeled for the red that's coming. So this baby's a 2011 from Hawke's Bay. Pinot Gris. Now, Pinot Gris won't overtake Sat Blanc. However, Pinot Gris is a fantastic alternative to Sat Blanc. Sometimes people get a bit tired of that, what the strong aromatics that pin, um, that that Sab Blanc um, delivers, and, and look, it is fantastic. But sometimes people want to change. Now Pinot Gris is a little bit more subtle, a little bit more elegant, a bit more perfume, and it's got a different flavour set and profile compared to a Sab Blanc. This is a prime example of Pinot Gris that exhibits freshly cut pears. There's a hint of apple, there's a nice, just nice, almost like a musky perfume. And there's a little bit of citrus, like a citrusy type, almost like a, a, a citrus blossom or something like that, or in the citrus category, I suppose. Mmm, it's delicious. Now, depending on, on where you buy or where you get your Pinot Gris. Some can have a bit of residual sugar, which makes them a little bit more delicate and almost um, more open to, to to have with desserts or fruit platters and things like that. This one, on the other hand, is nice, bone dry. It's got zingy acidity on the finish. It's almost got a cut apple uh, thing going on on the palate, and it's making my palate salivate. Very smooth, very silky, um, now this is not chilled either, so you take the take the, you chill it for a bit to take the edge off it, and it just becomes more you know, more mouth watering. It's a very 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 easy wine to drink, um, and at the fifteen dollar price point, you, seriously you cannot go wrong. It just offers more more and more the more you swirl. Sarah from Pinot Gris, Hawke's Bay, New Zealand, North Island, it's a little bit warmer than Marlborough. This, it's also got a bit of richness about it as well. There's no oak, all stainless steel. Get yourself on a Pinot Gris, you'd be pleasantly surprised how good this stuff is. Okay, so uh, give us a call, send us an email, send me a tweet if you want some, otherwise go to your local, um, your local wine store, get your hands on a Pinot Gris. You'll be pleasantly surprised. And thank you for watching Wine Passion TV. Cheers.